With Labor Day now just a few hours away, we're about to watch a union power player at work. Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes takes us to the picket line. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. That woman dancing around the picket line is Sarah Nelson, president of the Association of Flight Attendants. Don't be fooled by her playfulness. She's been called the most powerful labor leader in the country. What is the labor movement waiting for? Her steeliness came through in a speech she gave, a call to arms, really, to the AFL-CIO in January in the midst of the government shutdown. End this shutdown with a general strike! The last time there was a general strike in the United States was 1946. In this case, Nelson was calling on all 12 million members of the AFL-CIO to walk out en masse. We have real power as workers. If we decide not to participate um, in this economy, it stops. Everything stops. But what you said came as a surprise to most people. This was an extraordinary moment. 400,000 people are forced to come to work without pay. And the people that I represent are going to work in an increasingly unsafe condition. What is the labor movement waiting for? By unsafe, she was referring to how the government shutdown was putting stress on airport screeners and others working without pay. Layers of security that were put in place after 9-11, when the TSA was created, are not there. No one will get out of this unscathed if we do not stop this shutdown. If it is unsafe, we will refuse to work those flights. Can, Can you do that? We have that right. We have that right today. Well, um, when you put it in the terms that you did <laughs> and that you are right now, mm -hmm. there's an implicit threat. You're going to shut down the whole economy. Yes. After her call for a strike... There were a handful of air traffic controllers who said, I can't. I'm too stressed. I'm too tired. I can't medically do my job. And the plane stopped. And we said, do we have your attention now, Leader McConnell? And a few hours later, we had a resolution. We have reached a deal to end the shutdown. America's longest government shutdown came to an end, and Sarah Nelson became a hero. But she's fortunate. In one of the biggest strikes involving aviation workers, labor lost. If you go back to PATCO, if you, I don't know how old you were at PATCO. <laughs> well, third grade. You were in third grade, and I was covering the White House. <laughs> Political observers feel that Mr. Reagan has been just plain lucky, drawing as his first bout with labor a clearly illegal walkout. It was 1981 when PATCO, the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, led a strike of its 11,000 members for better pay. Our position has to be irreversible. There is a law and uh, an oath that they signed. So President Reagan fired them all. Since then, union membership has declined from 20% of all American workers to only 10%. The PATCO strike had a devastating impact on the labor movement in 1981. Not just air traffic controllers who lost their jobs, but the whole labor movement was dispirited by it. Professor Joe McCartan teaches labor history at Georgetown University. He says Sarah Nelson brings something new and inspiring to the union movement. If you say union leader to most people, they still, I think, have in their mind the image of a cigar-chomping George Meany, yeah. you know? Yeah. And when you meet Sarah Nelson, she clearly doesn't fit that image. Yeah. You have quite a collection <laughs> of airplanes. <laughs> well, <laughs> we represent flight attendants at 20 airlines. She became a flight attendant 24 years ago when a college friend sold her on the idea. Once she started, she moved all over the country, flying out of Washington, Chicago, and Boston. One of the planes that uh, went into the 9-11 towers flew out of Boston. Yes. Could you have been on one of those planes? I flew Flight 175 a week earlier, and I um, was friends with everyone on the plane. So this is Michael Turo and Amy King, and um, they were on Flight 175, and good friends. Oh. And I keep oh. them next to me every day. We were taught up to that point 
that if there's a hijacker on board, that we are supposed to appease the hijacker, try to keep the hijacker calm, do what they say. That was part of training? That was part of training. That was in our handbook. But the flight attendants on 9-11 didn't follow the handbook. And they fought back. They decided instantaneously to do that. And so our role changed even before we were told that it should change. Almost everything about what it means to be a flight attendant has changed. It wasn't so long ago that stewardesses couldn't be more than 32 years old, had to be under a specific weight, and couldn't get married. Sexism. This is a huge issue for people in your line of work. Our profession was um, objectified and sexualized by airline marketing. This is what was, this is what was sold. You can fly me morning, afternoon, or night. Just say when. I'm Judy, and I was born to fly. Fly me. An ad like that today? Well, it's unthinkable. But Nelson says not all the changes in her industry have been for the better. What are you saying about how crammed in we are now? If you're in a window seat, <laughs> and the seat in front of you is reclined backward, you can't get out. Um, those seats have been shrinking. They've been getting closer together and smaller and packing more people in. And there are fewer attendants than there used to be? The airlines are staffing at the federal minimums today. And prior to 9-11, they were staffing 25 and 50% over on a regular basis. So let me get this straight. More people on each plane in a tighter configuration and fewer flight attendants. More people, more responsibilities, and fewer flight attendants. Which brings us to the Boeing 737 MAX jet that crashed in both Indonesia and Ethiopia, killing hundreds, and leading to the plane's grounding and to congressional hearings. These accidents should never have happened. Both hero pilot Sully Sullenberger and Sarah Nelson were called to testify. I am here today because the public looks to flight attendants when it comes to aviation safety. The evidence was mounting and action was being taken around the world. We called for a grounding. Does your union have the power to keep that plane? Planes don't take off without pilots, but they also don't take off without flight attendants. If we believe that a condition is not safe, we're not going to fly it. Hey, listen, can you get your, um, your homework out? When she's not calling for strikes or grounding airplanes, Sarah Nelson raises her rambunctious son, Jack, along with her husband, David. But union duties often intrude. I have to make a call real quick to one of our negotiators, okay? The um, FAA administrator wants to meet with me now. Um, oh, it's about Boeing. You're a working mother. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You have a big job. And you're like all the other working mothers around the country, having to do that balance thing. My son is nine years old. I often have to explain to him why I'm going to be gone, or why I might not be home before he goes to bed, or why I might have to leave before he wakes up in the morning. I think you think about your job in very idealistic terms. I think about it as my calling. She certainly has a way of revving up her troops. At times, she's like a cheerleader. So what is this thing where you break into song? What is that? <laughs> you know, sometimes I can't help but sing. We go together like rhyme, 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 like a ding, and a ding, da dong. Remember for With a group of people, it's just the thing to bring everyone together. Ting, 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 and ting, she bought. Whoa. So I'm a little out of practice. You but. are no George Meany. <laughs> That's all I can say. The age of George Meany is long gone. Now, as Professor McCartan says, American labor may be heading in a whole new direction. I believe it's um, highly likely that the next leader of the AFL-CIO will be a woman. Uh, will it be Sarah? Quite possibly. She certainly put herself in the conversation. OK, the big question. Becoming the head of the AFL-CIO, do you want that job? I'm, I'm open to that, and I'm open to the idea that we, can, um, that, that we can really rebuild this labor movement. Are you ready to stand up to management? Because <laughs> they're going to do everything they can to keep the labor movement down. Well, the rules in this country have been written for Wall Street. And it's going to stay that way 
until we force it to go the other way. This land is your land. People need to understand that this is our country and this is our work and we should be respected for it and paid for it. Solidarity forever!